in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why don't you turn around, greet one another, say, wishing you a blessed and a graceful new year. Hug few people, okay? Shake hands. Some of you may be worrying about the COVID, fine. But then take this opportunity to greet and bless. Now this is uh, watch night service or New Year Eve service. I heard about a story where a Sunday school teacher had just finished telling her class the Christmas story. And this class were containing children of six to seven years old. Now after telling the story, the teacher asked, who do you think the most important woman in the Bible is. Who do you think is the most important woman in the Bible? After telling a Christmas story, we all know that what the answer the teacher expected. But then a little boy raised his hand and said, Madam, the most important woman in the Bible is Eve. Now the teacher asked him why he thought he was the most important woman in the Bible. Then the little boy replied, well, they have named two days of the year after Eve. Christmas Eve and New Year Eve. So Eve is the most important woman in the Bible. Now we are here for this New Year Eve service. And when you are part of this service, you yourself and we too expect that you are here with or in a state of love and happiness and joy. That's what expected when you are part of a service like this. You know why? Because in a service like this, we take time to thank the Lord for helping us or for enabling us to live throughout this year that just passed by. And in a service like this, we hope that the next year would bring us joy, hope, love, peace, and happiness. We said Happy New Year. Many times it is superficial. We never we never give a thought on it even while saying that. When we expect the new year full of hope, peace and happiness, question, is it filled with peace, hope and happiness? When we have a lot of discouraging news or incidents happening around us. Really speaking, our reality seems to crush this hope at every turn of our lives. Now this morning, we were told that the COVID cases are rising. Now, there are fears because I don't know, people say that maybe this time the numbers will go up. I'm not sure. And this last year, we saw a lot of wars between different countries. And the wars are still going on. Crushing economy. Uprising of terrorism, communal violence, racism, attack against the women natural calamities, harsh weather, pollutions, dominating news headlines in 2023, then drugs and, and different kind of violence and fights, all are all there. And then coming to us, some of us seated here have gone through tragedies, problems, disappointments, 
failures and sadness. Not only gone through. Now when we have entered into this new year, some of us are still experiencing personal pain and suffering. For some here, there are concerns about the health. And for few others, it is the financial crisis, the career issues, problems in the family, spiritual struggles, unanswered prayers. We should be frank and accept that there are serious concerns about what the new year will bring for us and our loved ones. And that is the reason why I said many times when we greet and say Happy New Year, it's superficial. We have to tread on or we have to walk on a new road in this new year, which is very unfamiliar. We don't know where it is going to end or what are we going to face? Or we are not even sure we will be able to fulfill the journey of this year 2024. There are fears. Sometime in the eighth, early part of the 19th century, it was a very dark winter night and a very tired and weary traveler came to the banks of this mighty Mississippi River for the first time. It was freezing cold. There was no bridge in the sight and the ice covered the water as far as one, should, one could see. Now this man standing on the shore questioning himself, should I muster courage to cross this river walking on the ice? Next question, next doubt, will this ice be able to bear my weight. But then, it's urgent, it is priority for him to go to the other side. Some urgent work is waiting for him. Thinking deep, he comes with a plan. Instead of walking straight, he decides to walk on his hands and knees. That means crawling, creeping on that ice. And when he was in the middle of that river, just crawling, creeping on his hands and knees, and he hears a big sound behind him. Shocked, he looks back and is astonished. He sees a horse drawn sleigh filled with coal, and the driver is just driving that cart on that ice. And then that driver, that man driving a horse down sleigh filled with coal, he just, he just dashed past him. And then after a few seconds he was out of sight. Whereas this man was crawling on his hands and knees. We are like that traveler many times. Just recently we celebrated the feast of nativity which reminded us about the promise that God is not just for us, he is with us, Emmanuel. We know the promise that he will never leave us, never forsake us. Even then, there are forces which withdraws us back. Lack of confidence, timidity, our physical or mental state and we take extreme cautions in order to secure the promise so that some people may not laugh at us. To keep the promise secure, we are taking small, tiny steps of faith and worse than any of this is fear, crippling and immobilizing fear. All this tend us to hold us back and preventing us from moving forward. There was one comic strip in which a young woman was actually grumbling and complaining to another person. 
She was complaining about the problems that were increasing day by day. And she was feeling difficulties were there around every corner. And it was just the beginning of the new year. She complained and said like this, I don't think this is a new year at all. Because the problems are increasing. And then struggles are there everywhere. The same like last year. And then she said like this, I think we have been stuck with the used year. Not the new year, the used one. The second hand one. The used year. We are stuck in the used year. Here is the new year. And I told at the very beginning, as a church, we are given with a sacrament called repentance and confession, which reminds us that all the failures and the worries and the fears that we experienced in the last year can become a learning lesson to become successful, to grow in life. If we admit, if we are willing to admit, if we are willing to learn from those failures, if we are willing to grow and change, then that will help. If we are going to repeat the same that we were repeating the previous year, let me remind, let me also be reminded, at the end of the year, I am going to have the same frustration, same discouragement, same difficulty, same problem that I had in 2023. 2023. So when we are reminded that in every generation, believers have been faced moments when fear threatened, when fears and worries threatened to overwhelm faith. And God's word for all those people always was fear not, worry not. We read from the gospel this morning. And someone said like this, the phrase fear not is given 365 times in the Bible. That means for each day you can have this one phrase fear not. Fear not, the God is with us. Fear not. He will never leave us and never forsake us. By worrying and fearing, we are just wasting our time. By worrying and fearing, we are actually focusing only on the problems, not on the solution. By, fear, by worrying and by fear, we are taking our attention from God. And as we have entered into another new year, why don't? We take this time to make a commitment again. Someone said in a poem like this, life is a book in volumes three. Life is a book in three volumes. The past, the present, and the yet to be. The first is already written and laid away. It's kept on the side. The second we are writing every day. The next and the last of this volume three is hidden from our sight and God holds the key. Life is a book in volume 3, the past, the present and the yet to be. The first is written and laid away, the second we are writing every day. The next and the last of this volume 3 is hidden from sight, God holds the key. God holds the key. Let's commit ourselves and each other into the hands of God. He holds the key. He will make sure there will be trials, there will be sickness, problems, difficulties and hindrance. He will make sure that we will go through this year 24 like we successfully did in year 2023. We will successfully end the year 2024 too. May God grant us grace. Thank you for all your, your valuable prayers and requests that keep us in prayers in the same way as you did in the past in this year. And please be assured of our prayers for you and for your family that this year will be very meaningful, blessed, and graceful. And you and your family 
will continue to walk in the ways of the Lord, will become his witness, and God will use you to take his good news and to become his witness through your life and words, where more and more people will be touched, impacted, and will become part of the kingdom. May God grant you grace.